Uh, hey, we are folks. It's Brother Peter again. The tidbits from the Word. We had uh, ended up in uh, verse 14 of uh, chapter 3 of the book of Philippians in our 12th. That was in our 12th excerpt. Uh, this is our 13th excerpt, and we're going to do 15. So there'll be uh, in the rest of chapter 3 and part of chapter 4. And, wow, uh, to, to the end of chapter 4, we're going to have to really push to get in what Paul was saying. It is very hard to just read, like, for instance, verse 14. I press toward the mark. What does this represent? What is he saying? So in between there, we've got to come to the place to where we see what he's saying. What is the mark? This represents the moral and spiritual target. The moral and spiritual target that we're, we're aiming for to throw our dart into, which is our life. Our life is our dart. And we want to put our life on this mark. And why does he say that? He says that for this reason. For the prize of the high calling of God. What is that? What is the prize of of the high calling of God. That's to be Christ-like. If we can be Christ-like, then we are in the prize mode. That's the prize that we have given to us by Jesus Christ. He did it on the cross. He proclaims the manner and the means which all is done. He's the one that proclaims it, which is the cross. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. Let's see if we can find that in our Bible. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. And uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 17. And, and see what this says. You need to keep a Bible open if you're going to watch. Uh, listen to Brother Peter. 1 and 17. It says this. For Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect so he's saying the wisdom has to be of the cross verse 18 said for the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness but unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. The wisdom of the Jewish world in that day was only to have circumcision. That was the wisdom of the world of that day. But the wisdom of God was through faith in Jesus Christ. So, so here we are in Philippines, verse 15, chapter 3. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect. This is mature. He's saying, not in the perfection of the world or as the Judaizers are, but the perfection of in the mind having our minds on Christ having done what what God said to do through the cross and now we have him in our heart and we ought to allow him to live through us and make us known as his children and if anything be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you. 
In other words, <laughs> as you get saved, you grab that bottle of beer. You grab that can of beer. And God's going to say to you, Hey, you can't touch that. You've been delivered from that. You can't, you can't do that nasty stuff anymore. Grab that cigarette, put it up to your mouth. Hey, he said, you, you gave your body to me. You gave it to me. The devil brought that smoking into the situation. I didn't bring it in. You gave yourself to me. You don't need that nicotine anymore. You don't need that lying, stealing, and cheating anymore. You don't need that alcohol anymore. You gave your life to me. Your body belongs to me, sir, ma'am. You belong to Jesus Christ through the cross. He shed His blood. Should we do those things which are offensive to the body and offensive to the God that lives in us? Jesus in me and me in Him. And we are one. How can I continue in the things of the world and call myself one with Jesus. You say, Brother Peter, are you preaching perfection? No. You know what I'm preaching? Conviction. Not, conf <laughs> not perfection, but conviction. Conviction, if I do do something wrong, I'm convicted of the Spirit that now lives in me that that's not right. Do you have some things in your life, Brother Peter, you need to take care of? I do. Are you working on them? I am. How long have you been working on? Some of them for years. Are you, are you, you ardently working on them? I don't think so. I don't think I'm really. I think I've really not paid enough attention to really taking care of the situation. On the other hand, to achieve a physical perfection would not do what it, you would think it would do for your spiritual perfection. Because the minute you think you've got everything, God will show you something else. <laughs> We've got to be careful. God brought me through a knot hole last night backwards. I sat under a young man preaching last night who I had wrongly judged. I had wrongly judged a man. And I prayed last night. I got the opportunity to go and to sit under him and listen to him. And I said, God, open my mind and my heart up for this young man. God, give me, show me the worth the worth miss of this young man. And I went and sat under him. And God said, you see, I'm bringing him through too. Just like I've been bringing you through. If you use the word I have been brought through, that means you've acquired already the perfection. You know you never will. You strive every day for perfection. You have not been brought through. So striving daily for perfection is the deal. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 15. And God revealed unto me last night. I was otherwise minded about this young man. God said, hey, let me show you something. He's coming out. He's coming through. He's where you were at one time. And and you were at the place one time where people said, I don't think that Peter will ever amount to nothing. <laughs> we still have people that say that. And uh, so, uh, but this means that some of us were actually otherwise minded 
But through the words of the Holy Spirit, and through the words in this Bible that God had Paul penned down, got us in the right way, and is pulling us continually to the cross with a big hug, and saying, rid yourself of some of these things, and, and I will use you. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing that. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained. This is progress. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same things. What he's saying is let us walk in this path that Jesus has laid out before us of righteousness. There were some enemies of the cross. Look at what Paul says in verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me. What he's saying, you imitate me. You follow what Jesus has taught me and you be an imitator of me, and you be following what you need to. And mark them which walk uh, so as you have us for an example. Mark them that do not walk that way. And be careful who you mark. I'm afraid that I myself have marked some wrongly. Unless you know all, A-L-L, -L, of the circumstances of a man that you're dealing with or you're living around that is a Christian brother. Unless you know all of his circumstances. Unless you know all of his bringing up. Unless you know all of his bloodline. Unless God makes you a judge, you better be careful. Because you can judge wrongly and more than likely will. If I judge a young man according to perfection, he will always fail. But then I myself can walk up to a mirror and look at me and say, if I judge myself like I'm judging him, I'm one of the biggest failures you've ever seen. Because if I judge by the flesh, I'm judging wrongly. If I judge by my failures, I'm judging wrongly. I've got to judge by the, the grace of the cross. that says that God is for me. He's on my side. And He's going to bring me through. Remember back up in verse 15. He said, Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything you be otherwise minded God shall reveal it unto you. What is he saying that perfection is? Obedience to the word. That's what he's saying. Perfection in the Christian life is being obedient to the word. I see everywhere I go Ten Commandments stuck up in yards. Ten Commandments. And the very person that has them in the yard is a thief. You say, how is he a thief? Well, I can say one way. I can tell you one way. If he doesn't tithe 10% of everything he makes to God, he's robbing from God. That's the first thievery. If God has given him breath in his body and time in the morning, and he doesn't pray to the Lord or read his Bible, he's robbing God and he's robbing himself. And his, outside his physical, his perfection is flawed. Paul said, 
practice makes perfect. Even though when Paul went to the to his last grave, he didn't claim perfection of the body. He claimed perfection of the soul. For many walk, is what he said in verse 18. He's speaking of those attempting to live for God. On the outside of the victory of the rudiments of the cross of Christ. If you're claiming piety, you're pious. And say, you know something, Peter? And I've had people tell me this. You know, I don't think I've ever told a lie. I've never stole anything. I don't think I've ever done anything bad. I've always uh, been good to everybody. I've done anything. That's piety. That's your own salvation. That's your own religion. And, and Jesus said, that stinks in my nostrils. I died on the cross for you. If you want what you're saying that you have, you can only get that through me. The one who did it for you. Of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. Paul's saying, that, look, he said in verse 18, this is the most serious matter that I've spoke to you about since I've been working with you people. Any of you, that's all the way from the day Paul started writing to the day we die. That's everybody. The Bible is written to every person, human being on earth. Paul's saying this, not only to that little group around him, he's saying it to you and I. And he was weeping about it. It was such a serious matter that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Those who do not look exclusively to the cross are enemies to Christ. It's only in the cross it's where it's done. Otherwise, your enemies. Verse 19. Whose end is destruction. If the cross is ignored, and you continue in that ignorance, your soul will be ultimately lost and be in hellfire forever. He said, whose God is their belly? That's those who would subvert the gospel of Jesus Christ and the cross for personal gain. And there are those. There are those who are preaching in pulpits today that do not believe this Bible. But they saw that if they went to Bible school and got educated, learned enough so they could hoodunk people into thinking, quote, quote, we have got the most educated preacher you ever seen. He has a style like nobody else. He can delegate the Word of God out so that it doesn't offend anybody. I got news for you, sister, brother. The cross is an offensive thing. The word of God offends everybody. It offends the flesh of everybody. If you go to church and you haven't been offended by the word of God, you haven't gained an inch. You haven't gained an, a thing. You haven't gained anything. The Bible is an offensive book to the devil. <coughs> and the devil has got control of the people of this day. And the Bible has to cut away that devilish action, those devilish things. And that's offensive to a man. He doesn't want something cut away. He said, of whom I have 
told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, whose end is destruction. If the cross is ignored, and it is today in many pulpits across the country, and continues to be ignored, which it is continually being ignored today, there will be a great loss of many souls. This is the ultimate conclusion if the cross is not preached. Whose God, he said, was their bellies. That's referring to those who attempt to preach an easy believism. Ah, oh, just believe in God and do what you want. He's a forgiving God. He's a righteous God. He's a merciful God. He'll take care of it in the end. No. That's not true salvation. True salvation is uh, to remove yourself from what you were before you were saved. Where nothing added to you but material things. Remove that desire for the earthly things that would be ahead of God. This means that you have an interest in heavenly things now. And that signified to me, and it will signify to you when you get saved if you're not, that personal gain is not always godly gain. If you do it in a godly manner and God gives it to you and you use it in a godly way, then God will use it. Uh, our conversation. Remember now, I, as you follow Brother Peter and PH Tidbits, if you are following, you're going to find out when I say the word conversation, I say it in a biblical sense. If you go back to your Bible and get your Bible dictionary out, and look up the word conversation. In those days, it meant your manner of life. Your manner of life. Where's your conversation? You didn't have to say a word. Anybody can watch you and tell if you're a fool or not. Anybody can watch you and tell you if you're a godly man or not. Anybody can watch you and tell what kind of driver you are. Anybody can watch you and tell what kind of worker you are. Anybody can watch your life and tell what kind of person you are by watching your conversation. Not listen to you. They may never hear you speak. Never hear you speak. But if every time they see you, you're drunk, they know your manner of conversation is not spiritual. If every time they see you, you're witnessing for the Lord, you're reading your Bible, or you're going to church, you're doing something, they know that you're a godly man. And see, your conversation is what people see. But now the enemies of the cross look exclusively on the things of the world. Exclusively on what's for me, what's for me, what's for me, what's the gain? I've seen more lives wrecked. Christian life. People who have come into the church who have said I'm going to follow God. First thing is, they didn't get started tithing. If you're in the church and you don't tithe, you're not under the blessing of God, you're under the curse of God. Because 10% of every penny that He allows you to funnel through your hands belongs to Him. He said, this 10% is not yours to spend, it's mine. If I've got a whole dollar, and I spend the whole dollar, I just spent 10 cents that belonged to God if I hadn't already taken it out. If I get $300, the very first thing my wife and I do, take $30, put it in an envelope, put it on the bench. Sunday, it's going to the church. Now, the $260 we have left, or $90, $70 we have left, 
we're going to be able to use it freely to do whatever God would have us do with it. So we're going to take and we're going to stretch it out. We're going to use a little here on the light bill. We're going to use a little here on the rent. We're going to use a little here on the car payment. We're going to use a little here on the gas payment. Uh, we elected, uh, my wife and I elected a year or two ago, uh, 10 years ago, uh, to not have cable TV. It's overrated and overpriced. We went and bought a $110 antenna and wire, put it on the TV. What TV we have is about 30 or 40 stations on antenna, and anybody can do it. Antennas are still used. Hook an antenna up. They got antennas out now for $27. $27 you can buy an antenna. You can get almost as much TV as you're going to get. Through. And by the way, you can get more TV than you really should be looking at. You can get more of the worst of the worst of the worst, even on an antenna. Let me get back in the Bible. Of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. That's where we started in verse 18. Paul was weeping for those who were already saved and already knew how they were supposed to walk. And he was weeping because he said, you're not walking circumspectly. Your conversation is not clean enough, fellas. Your life is not clean enough, fellas. And you're not showing those whose end is destruction. That you are truly who you say you are. And so be careful of that. He said for our conversation. Verse 20 is in heaven. And what he's saying here. He's meaning to tell you. That anything outside of godliness. Is not going to be in heaven. He said, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Jesus Christ. He said, we're looking for the rapture. We're looking for that day when we lay this body down and we enter in to our new life in heaven forever with the Father God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that day is coming, he said. And that day is coming. I got to get through here. All right. That our conversation is in heaven. Uh, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21. Who? That's the Lord. Shall change our vile bodies. That's in resurrection. Uh, that is, it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's every saint, every saint that has said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul, shall have a glorified body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That's the end of chapter 3. Paul's saying, all things are done through Christ. If it's not done through Christ, it is not of Christ. We've got to get back to the stand, standard of proper Christian living. Well, our time has come and gone. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. And I would love to tell you, we will never, in this body, achieve perfection. But we are to strive for it. Just like when we're at work, we strive to do right in our job. We need to strive for perfection. We'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.